Hello and welcome to my Blender tutorial. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make objects appear or disappear based on an empty object scale and position, using geometry nodes. This is a really cool and useful technique that I've used in my own projects, and I'm excited to share it with you today. Have you ever wanted to create a dynamic animation, where objects appear or disappear based on certain conditions? Maybe you're working on a product visualization, or even a short film. Well, with this technique, you can do just that. And the best part is that it's surprisingly easy to do in Blender. So stick around and let's dive into it. I have prepared this startup file for the purposes of demonstration. The unit scale for this scene is 0.1, and the length is in centimeters. The strawberry and the leaf have real-world measurements. In case if you want to follow along this tutorial, you can download this startup file from the first link in the description. The first step is to go right into the Geometry Nodes workspace. Select Scene Collection in the Outliner. Add in a plane. On the plane size, adjust it to be 100 cm. Tab into Edit Mode, right-click, then subdivide it once. Right-click once more, Loop Tools, then Circle. If you have not enabled Loop Tools yet, go to Edit, then Preferences. On Add-ons, search for Loop Tools. Enable it, then save preferences. Rename this plane to, Plane Leaves. That is because we want to use geometry nodes to attach a bunch of leaves to it. When the plane leaves is selected, create a new geometry node group. Rename it to, Leaves. Right now we only have a group input and a group output. The next step is to add some points on this mesh. Those points are going to be used to scatter the leaves on it. Go to Add, Point, then Distribute Points on Faces. Connect it here. The Distribute Points on Faces node is used to place points on the faces of a mesh. This is useful for scattering points where leaves will attach over the surface of the plane. This node takes in a mesh's input and outputs a point cloud. Go to Add, Instances, then Instance on Points. Connect it here. The Instance on Points node is used to duplicate a mesh at the positions of the points in a point cloud. This will enable creating repeating patterns for the leaves on the surface of the plane. This node takes in a mesh and a point cloud as inputs, and outputs a new mesh. Go to the Outliner, drag the leaf into the Geometry nodes. It comes in as an Object Info node. To scatter the leaves on the plane, connect Geometry from Object Info to Instance. Next step is to add in an empty object that will control the scale of the leaves based on its current scale and position. Go to Add, Empty, Sphere. Rename it to, Empty Leaves. Drag Empty Leaves into the Geometry nodes. It also comes in as an Object Info node. I had already said that this empty sphere is going to alter the scale of the leaves based on its position. Therefore, go to Add, Input, then Position. Bring the Position node here. Go to Add, Vector, then Vector Math. A Vector Math node performs the selected math operation on the input vectors. Therefore, the inputs for it will be location from Object Info, and position from the Position node. The math operation we need for this one is Distance. Go to Add, Vector, then Separate XYZ. Bring the node here. The separate XYZ node separates the input vector into its individual X, Y, and Z components. This can be useful for isolating specific values in a vector. Connect scale from object info to vector this way. Go to add, utilities, then map range. The map range node maps a value from one range to another. In this case it is useful because it will help in scaling the values of the leaves within a specific range. Connect value from distance to value on the map range node. Now if you adjust the scale of the empty object nothing happens. But if you change its position, you can see it is altering the scale of the leaves. In order to make the empty object scale affect the leaves, connect X from separate XYZ to from maximum. Go to add, utilities, then math. The math node simply performs math operations. Change the function to be subtract. Connect X from separate XYZ to value, and value, to from maximum. Now if you scale the empty object you can see it's altering the scale of the leaves as well. As you can see these leaves are facing one direction. 
go to add utilities then random value change the data type to be vector connect value to rotation of instance on points if you make the maximum values to something like 90 degrees you get a randomized result in this case we only need to randomize the z rotation if you want to gain more control on the distribution of these leaves, go to Distribute Points on Faces and change it to Poisson Disk. Adjust it to where you find interesting. In this animation you see that the leaves in the middle part disappear, and then the strawberries appear. In order to create the geometry nodes for the strawberries, select Plain Leaves, Shift D to Duplicate. Rename the duplicated one to, Plain Strawberries. On the Geometry Nodes area, copy the Geometry Node group, then rename it to Strawberries. In order to change the leaves to become Strawberries, go to this Object Info node, then change Object to Strawberries. On the Map Range node, interchange these values this way. To create the desired random rotation on the Strawberries, go to the Random Value node and set Maximum X and Y to be 90 degrees. Let's adjust values on the Distribute Points on Faces node. If you want to get bigger strawberries, go to the Map Range node, then increase the to minimum value, to 2. This empty sphere is controlling both the leaves and strawberries. Therefore, Shift D to duplicate this empty sphere, then scale it down slightly. On the Outliner, rename it to Empty Strawberries. In the Strawberries Geometry Nodes group, go to this Object Info node, then change Object to Empty Strawberries. Select Empty Strawberries first, then Shift Select Empty Leaves last. Control P, set Parent to Object. Now if you scale Empty Leaves, it scales Empty Strawberries as well. You can animate this by setting keyframes on the scale value of empty objects, 